talk about today is um, placement of snares it's it's a common problem that I see um, a lot of my clients my tutoring clients um, a lot of them before they're taught snare they struggle with placing snares and when it's actually broken down into its simplest terms it's, it's one of the easiest bits of percussion to actually place so what I've done is I've, I've got a simple drum loop that sounds like this Really no percussion in there whatsoever. Let me just um, solo the drums. So there's a little bit of percussion, but it's not too full. At this point, when, I, when I've got a loop going, um, at this point, I, I would start thinking about a snare. A snare can really add groove to, to a song. Um, the snare's always swung. Um, for those that don't know, swing is essentially the technical term for groove. So when you hear a song and, and, and someone says, oh, that's really groovy, the reason they're saying it's really groovy is because it's swung. Um, essentially, it's just some of the notes are hitting slightly later than others, which gives us that kind of groovy effect. So what I've done is I've put a little drum rack on this track here um, and I've included a few snares. And as you can hear, all of them are quite short, quite snappy sounds. So uh, I want to make sure, it's going to be a short video today. Like I say, it's quite simple. So um, make sure that your sounds are, are nice and snappy. You don't want them too drawn out. If, if you get like really long, drawn out snares, ones with really loads of decay on, loads of tail on them, um, it's going to make your track sound more EDM-y or more tech house. It's the kind of, uh, you know, the quite generic Fisher kind of sound where it's it's got a rolling snare up until it drops. But the type of snare that I'm including today is more of a, a percussive snare and, and one that kind of rides with the groove. So let me go into this drum rack now. And the, it's essential that the first thing I've been playing around in here, so ignore, let me just go back a step ignore what I'm doing here I was just playing around so when you first click into it it will look like this it's really important at this point that we change our grid to 16th notes now we write most house music or most elements of house music in 16th notes if I zoom in so that we can see the individual beats here so where it goes light dark light dark that is the the individual beats that we're seeing so a kick would be on this 16th note here like so an open hat would be on this middle 16th note here so that leaves me with only two places that i want to put the snare a snare can only go on the second or the fourth 16th note of any beat there is one caveat there's one thing that a, there's a reason that in the future we can put one in the middle but that will become apparent at the end um so if i zoom in knowing what i know now that it, a, a snare can only go on the second or the fourth sixteenth note of every beat if i'm ever struggling to place it it's really really easy i just go to the nearest second or fourth like that and i put one there and i play the track and at the moment it's sounding a bit abrupt it's horrible and the reason for that is because there's no swing on this so i come over here and i've already had swing on some of the other elements of my track already so I'll just select one of the swings that I've used at the moment. This is the swing 1686 or 85 maybe. Um, and now, instantly that snare, what we're listening out for is this. Instantly that snare works. So if I put it on the first and the th third 16th note of a beat, watch what happens. I'll do it on, the, I'll repeat that so we get the, emphasize it so we can hear. You can't hear it. The reason you can't hear it is because it's hitting at the same time as the kick and it's hitting it exactly the same time as the open hat as well. So we want to kind of fill out the groove with this snare and, and put it in between the gaps between the open hat and the kick. And that is on the two or on the four. Now, I don't want to put it on every single two and four because it would just get, it's too much. And it kind of sounds like it's not beat match. It kind of sounds a bit out of time. So I'll place one here on the first place I can do which is the it's a bit of a mouthful but it's the second 16th note of the first beat 
and then I'll try somewhere else. If I've got one on a second here, I'm going to look for more of a... I'm going to look for a fourth because I've always, already used a second 16th note. So let's try it on this fourth. And it's okay. It's okay. I think it would sound better on this next one though. Okay, that didn't quite do it for me. Let's try it on. I'm just going to keep moving it down each individual beat until I find one that I like. And that, that's okay there. So what I'm going to do is now put it on the next second. If you look at the top here, we've now gone into the second bar as well. So I'm kind of going to make a mirror image of the first bar. I don't always do this, but I feel like that, that'll work with these drums. So, And then another one there, because this is a mirror image of this one here, because we're at the end of the second bar now, going into the third bar. And that didn't work too well for me, so maybe let's just keep it like this. And if I draw that like that again, we've got a perfectly, if we look at the third and the fourth bar and the first and the second bar, they are a mirror image of each other. And that works well. Let me just higher it up a bit so we can hear it. Now what I'm going to do is just move it. I'm going to use exactly the same pattern and, and that is it for snare placement. There's nothing more complex than that. If you're struggling to place a snare, make sure your grid's in 16th notes, turn your swing on and only put the snare on the second or the four sixteenth note of any beat. If you stick to that kind of rule of thumb, you can't really go wrong with it. It's, it's really simple. But what I'm going to do is move it up now to a different sound. And if I turn it off, as you can see, it's giving the track a lot of groove. Turn it on. Nice. And let's try it on a different sound. And what I'm trying to show you here is that it does really matter it really does matter what kind of sound you use but i've just pulled out what's that five random snares and it will pretty much work on any of them i'm guessing so if i move it up again to a different sound again it works what's the top one And I like that one. It's kind of um, a bit more driven, a bit more prominent in the track. I think it, it works well. It gives me that kind of um, a bit like Michael James kind of snare. I feel like that's kind of sounds. Now, it's not perfect, but it, it's good enough. And that's that's good enough for me right now. So um, the only caveat, as I said, to, to placing a snare on the second or the fourth sixteenth note of any beat is when you want to do a snare roll now i would usually do this on the on the eighth or the sixteenth bar um but for this benefit of this we'll do it at the end of the fourth bar and what i'm going to do is draw a snare on the last on the fourth sixteenth note of the second to last beat there and then i'm going to put a snare on the second the third and the fourth sixteenth note now that's going to roll us nicely back to the start again so if you listen now As you hear, it goes skippy at the end there. It rolls us into the first bar again. Really nice effect. So I wouldn't have that all the time. I definitely wouldn't do that every bar or every two bars, but every every four, every eight, every 16, um, something like that, I would, I would have that. And it gives us a bit of variation in the track. So that's pretty much it for snares. It, it doesn't get more complicated than that. It, it is really quite simple. Um, as long as your pattern's good, it, it kind of frees up your creativity to select any snare you want because as you just heard here I've pulled four or five random snares out and they all work and it's 
they all work because the pattern is right with the groove and it sits in the groove well. Um, I will just take it back to the top and just turn the swing off. If I turn the swing off, watch the difference it makes. It just sounds really robotic. It doesn't work. It's too on grid. It's too perfect. We need to make sure Sorry, there's a motorbike going past, so it's gone dead loud. We need to make sure that the it's swung, so it gives us that nice groove. Turn the swing back on. Nice. Now, I all the samples you can find on the in the description. There's a link to a band camp um, there where there's a small donation for them. Um, also, I am running Kimber Community. Basically, it's a community of, of producers all helping each other out. I upload regular in-depth tutorials. Uh, I just kind of scratch the surface on YouTube. I, uh, I save all the in-depth stuff for my community. There's also free sample packs, bi-weekly sample packs, free plugins that I um, give a description for and a, and a tutorial for because you can find millions of plugins yourself online. It's just kind of how do you make that and how do you convert them into using them for minimal health? Where are they relevant for our genre? So if you've got any questions on that, you'd like to join, give me a shout. Um, the link to my Instagram is in the description. You can always give me a shout on there. I'll, I'll, I'll always get back to you. So thanks for watching.